in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed oh. song of worship. Go ahead, is our year of the rain. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, 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 ah. Azusa, and a wide-eyed evangelist called William Seymour came under the influence of this mighty presence and you led the Pentecostal movement you came upon women like Catherine Coleman, Amphi Sempro McFasson, Maria Woodward Eater and they shook their generations to a steel. You came upon Alexander Dewey and a frail cobbler called Smith Wigglesworth you came upon Madame Gunion. The spirit of the age to come. We invoke that spirit in this season of the rain. Set us ablaze. Let the rain pour. Let there be an outpouring of your spirit. Let there be an outpouring of miracles and signs and wonders. It shall come to pass in that day, say the Lord, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Upon the maids, I will also pour out my spirit. I will show forth wonders in the heavens and signs in the earth. Blood, fire, and smoke. This is that, oh God, that Joel prophesied about. We are in that season of the rain. Let there be an outpouring, oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. Open up the fountains of the deep and cause the rain to come upon your people. We are in that season. Ask ye for the rain in the time of the latter rain. We ask. This is the season of signs and wonders, the season of the manifestation of sons, the season of miracles, the season of the emergence of ambassadors, envoys of his majesty, the salt of the earth, the light of the world, champions, 
apostles and prophets, men of fire. Oh, let that army arise. Let that army arise. A mighty army. The fire divorced before them. Behind them a desolate wilderness. They shall leap upon walls. They shall run like chariots. Men who fear no evil. The fire will not burn them. But they will consume everything before them. Therefore we blow the trumpet in Zion. And we sound the alarm upon the holy mountain. We declare that this is that season. This is that time. This is that moment in prophecy. We are the generation that seeks your faith. Oh God of Jacob, arise, so oh mighty man, and empower your army for this season. glory we are changed there is a dimension of reality that cannot be taught it's an experience
Open our eyes. Open our eyes to the vistas of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I like you to pray. Just one prayer point. Say, give me a visitation tonight. It's our year of the rain. My goodness. Give me a visitation. You will catch fire. This is the year you will catch fire. It's a rain that brings fire. It's a rain that makes you an inferno. Pray and say, Lord, I make a demand. I ask for the rain. tonight don't be distracted don't be distracted Hallelujah. Hallelujah. listen to me I am absolutely convinced hear me that every one of us here represents a sphere of influence. Every one of us here represents a jurisdiction of dominion. And so this is a summit. It's, it's a convergence of kings. It's a convergence of ambassadors. So as you travel, you travel for your sphere of influence. As you pray, you pray for they that are tied to your grace. Don't see yourself as a single entity. For when they looked at the womb of Rebecca, they saw that there were two nations. Not just twins, two nations. We each represent territories, dimensions of spiritual operation that the nations will benefit from. And so when you cry, you cry on behalf of eternity. When you travel, you travel on behalf of a family, on behalf of a community. Lord, we love you. We love you. We thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Honestly, let me tell you something. We're not ready for what God has in store for us this year. We think we are, but I don't think we're ready. Because God is going to move this year in most dramatic proportions. You will see ordinary men turn into things that will make you wonder. And this is not some spiritual things. Physically, you will see men that will walk like gods in this city, across this nation. All God is asking is, do you believe? Do you believe? He said, blessed is she that believes. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance of those things that have been spoken. Unto her. Lord, we believe. Let the rain fall without restriction. We empty ourselves and we empty our vessels. Hallelujah. We ask you to help us tonight. Spirit of the living God, we submit to you. Unveil the mysteries of the kingdom. Teach us truths 
that are older than us teach us what made the ancient powerful open us up to ancient vistas in the spirit show us realities that predate our dispensation grant us access to abilities and dimensions in the spirit show us the ancient path oh that we will step into the sabbath grant us grace for there is a longing in our spirit there is a longing upon our generation a fresh dimension of the reality of the spirit and we trust you to bring us into this reality in the name of jesus christ praise the lord god bless you please be seated you're welcome just sit quietly pick up your writing materials there is a lot to do tonight please no let no seats be vacant there are so many people we can get some of the people to occupy the seats some of them are the extreme overflows if they can come and at least stand inside there are people under the anointing ushers i know that you it's a season of the rain. We will step into realities this year. We will step into strange dimensions of grace. And the Lord will grant it so. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will step into levels of realities that will change your physical form. Your physical form that will alter you. When Moses stood in the glory, he did not know that he was being changed. After 40 days, he stepped out and his skin, his flesh, his physical flesh. It's, it's not just about using cream and all of that. There is a level of glory. I'm telling you, I want you to believe this. God is not playing games with us. If we mean business with him, he says, who has believed our report? Who has believed? You will see mountains melt as if they never existed. That's what happens when the glory of the Lord comes. You will see God turn around situations. He said, turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. I want every meeting that we come for all through this year, you must be very intentional about it. You must be very definite about it. Hallelujah. You can greet and play around after the service. But the moment you step into this building, before the meeting starts, I want you to know that you are standing upon Mount Zion. And anything, just anything can happen. Hallelujah. That's what God wants to do. Let it cover all the earth. Oh, that's our prayer. Let it cover all the earth. That's our prayer. Let it cover all the earth. Let the rain of His Spirit cover us. Let it cover all I wrote this song years ago from my spirit. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Bless our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The reality of spiritual laws. The reality of spiritual laws. The reality of spiritual laws. 
what we'll be learning tonight will be so powerful. So powerful. My goal for us this year is that we will become so powerful. Men and women of extreme spiritual power. And it will happen as we are shown the keys of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. Listen, let me tell you something. For years, for years, there has been a cry in my spirit. Somehow, there is a testimony in my spirit that our generation has lost touch with ancient realities. You hear me use that word again and again. People move forward, but something in my spirit keeps drawing me back. And it says, if you can go back enough, you will find something we lost. Hallelujah. I've been intrigued every time I read things in scripture and it talks about ancient things. There is something that the ancient knew. It's not supposed to be so difficult. We have lost touch with the dimension of reality. Carnality. Flesh. Intercourse with Babylon. Cut short a flow of spiritual reality. And the Lord told me something last year. He said mantles do not leave the earth to heaven. That means every dimension of grace that has ever been displaced in the earth, they are archived in certain dimensions here in the earth realm. And if we can trust the ministry of the Holy Spirit, he will navigate us to those parts. And we will collide with these ancient mantles. And we will do strange things upon the surface of this earth. You believe that? And this is our journey. Show us great things, oh God. The reality of spiritual laws. Aside from revealing the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ, one of the cardinal areas of my call is to teach the body of Christ the principles of the kingdom. To unveil to the body of Christ that dominion is a resultant effect of the knowledge and the comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. A mystery is a hidden truth that requires the agency of the spirit or another spirit that is not of this realm to open an individual to the reality. It's called a mystery. Mysteries. The occultic realm operates on the strength of mysteries. Coded operations that are shrouded in mysteries. Science cannot explain it. It takes your fraternity with another spirit to open you up to those dimensions. And so he said it has been given unto you to know. The word know there is the word a man and a man knowing his wife. It has been given to you to come into a union with the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. If we ever will attain to that stature of spiritual authority where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom, then I want you to know that it will never just be by impartation. It will never just be by stories. It will stand upon the strength of something that we know. What did Job know that turned his financial predicament in a moment? The Bible did not tell us what business he did. The Bible just said Job prayed for his friends. Mysteriously, people started coming from everywhere. Brothers and sisters, are there portals we have lost in the spirit? Have we not lost touch with certain dimensions of spiritual reality? Hallelujah. The prophet said, bring me a mystery. Who taught him? Who lectured him? How did he know? He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the heart. My heart is indicting a good matter. He said, yea, I speak of excellent things. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Who taught this man? Who taught the psalmist that praise was a garment that a man can wear? He called it a garment. Not an attitude of praise. A garment. 
every time they praise God in the place of war, I noticed they use a coded language. All they said was, for he is good and his mercy endures. It was not any kind of praise. There was a type. It was like a spiritual code. Every time they began to say, for he is good and his mercy endures. He rose as a man of war. Meaning not every word invokes every dimension. There is a kind of language that makes God to operate in a certain way. Are you learning something? Help us, oh God. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters. Part of my resolutions this year is that I will open us up to deep things. Some of us will be afraid of some of the things we'll be learning. I've been praying and saying, Lord, prepare your people. Because it will rattle the eye the foundation of what you know to be Christianity. And you will know that many preachers have lied to us. Hallelujah. So let's prepare our hearts. Because this thing is not the exclusive reserve of one man. It has nothing to do with the posting of a preacher. Let me tell you something. The hallmark of an apostolic ministry I will keep saying it if we understand. It's not just miracles and signs and wonders and manifestations of the Holy Ghost. There is a dimension of that, right? But the hallmark of the true apostolic ministry is the ability to receive the revelation that is meant for a dispensation. To understand it and communicate it accurately to the people of God. Because the apostolic ministry is dispensational. Are you following me now? And the knowledge of God is also dispensational. Meaning there is a curriculum, there is a scope of understanding that God expects a dispensation to know. Are you following me now? So that what we call eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. Every dispensation coming with a revelation of God. And adding that revelation to another dispensation. Are you following me now? And that means that our dispensation has certain dimensions of God that we must know and we must touch. But it takes the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. Not just to do signs and wonders and to lay hands and heal the sick. That is important. But to be able to sustain a posture in the spirit such that we can receive these spiritual realities, understand them and interpret them to God's people. And then they will be able to walk in this path and you will see certain possibilities in our lives. Hallelujah. And this is what we aim to do in this place. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The reality of spiritual laws. Science has taught us that there are laws that govern this earth realm. They teach us in physics and, and chemistry and other aspects of science that there are laws and scientists have been able to come into the recognition of certain physical laws and they have been able to account for the explanation of certain tragedies that have happened to men hallelujah over time scientists began to inquire as to why men will encounter certain inexplainable tragedies and they later discovered that there were laws that were being violated unconsciously. That you do not recognize that there is a law does not mean it's not there. Are you following me now? Praise the Lord. If a child does not know there is gravity and he jumps on a, a, an altitude like this, the child will fall. Gravity will not say, I excuse you. Is that true? There are many other laws. Now, I want you to know that the same way spiritual laws govern this physical physical laws sorry govern this realm there are spiritual laws that govern the operation of the spirit hallelujah you are able to walk very well when you can master the laws physically none of us will find ourselves walking against gravity for instance and if by any means you are to walk against gravity, you know what to do to be able to remedy the, the imbalance that you are creating. And so you do not find yourself fighting the laws of nature. 
gravity for instance friction for instance all of these are laws i want you to know that there are spiritual laws say spiritual laws many people have been able to find these laws and walk with these principles and they have been able to do mind bogging things in the earth realm and as we explore this reality my goal tonight is not so much to share what the laws are as it is to bring us into a recognition that as scattered as spiritual things look as scattered as the earth is there is a rhythm are you getting my point there is an exact synergy there is a sequence there is an equation of the happening of things they are not as haphazard as we think there is a level of order and accuracy god designed the earth it is our inaccurate understanding or total ignorance to his principles that has resulted to certain levels of setbacks and limitations in our lives and in this year of the rain god wants to open us up to a recognition of certain principles and you will find out that what has grounded you for years you will walk cheaply you will now find out that the the enemy that many of us has been have been talking about they are not necessarily the demons out there our ignorance our lack of understanding the laws of god say amen the key to kingdom dominion please write this down the key to dominion the key to influence the key to power the key to wealth is hidden in our discovery of the ancient spiritual laws of the kingdom i'll repeat it again please make sure you are writing something or at least jotting something on your notepad or so on your phone or so the key to kingdom dominion the key to influence influence is the capacity to alter people's mindsets the key to power the key to wealth is hidden in our discovery of the ancient spiritual laws of the kingdom there are ancient laws encapsulated in this bible there are laws that are older than us there are laws that predate our dispensation they have been responsible for the rise and the fall of kings they have been responsible for the rise and fall of champions and when we find peace with these laws we will do big things for the kingdom we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with all personalize it say i have come with an open heart i have come with open hearts oh let me ancient word daniel chapter 19 let's begin our journey so that we can pray we have come we have come Daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 22. Mandi blakoshi prahata kosipa adaba. 
the story of a cruel king who slept and had a dream forgot the dream and forgot the interpretation and was mounting pressure upon all his wise men and cabinets and daniel said give us time and the bible says he asked for wisdom and in the night can we read together verse 19 one to read then was the secret revealed unto daniel in a night vision then daniel blessed the god of heaven verse 20 blessed be the name of the lord forever and ever for wisdom and might are his 21 he, he changed the times and seasons he removed kings and set up kings he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth in him. He said, then was the secret revealed. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, secrets can be revealed. Not everything is known by every Christian. Are you hearing me? The Bible says the secret things of the Lord are not just with Christians. They are with them that fear him. And he will reveal his covenants. He will show them his covenants there are mysteries in our world there are secrets that have been archived in the bowels of the spirit and it takes men who can press to say lord open my eyes show me the secrets that's why all things are not possible for everybody is that true kentucky fried chicken one of the great eateries around um, they have a secret recipe that till today has not been revealed. Is that true? That secret recipe is what makes them unique. Coca-Cola, till today, they have not revealed the exact formula and combination. Great men dwell upon the strength of secrets. In ancient time, it was a taboo to reveal the deepest of secrets they were known only by the king and his envoys those we call knights or apostles they were the highest representatives of the king they knew where treasures were hidden in castles they knew secret places of escape in chambers when when they came to defeat a nation they knew how to to invoke the powers of those territories to fight on their behalf it was an access that was given to them. And so as his ambassadors, God wants to show us. He doesn't want to hide anything from us. He said, come, let us reason together. I want to show you how I operate the heavens. So that you can draw from this and do wonders in the earth. If you believe that, say amen. So spiritual laws are real. The spirit realm is a real realm of existence just like the physical realm it is only a lot more superior to this realm this realm is bounded by many things there are limitations for instance this realm is purely three-dimensional but in the realm of the spirit there are many dimensions a lot of people have preached that there are four dimensions five i don't believe that i believe that there are infinite dimensions in the realm of the spirit because the possibilities in the spirit are defined by what dimension you can function hallelujah praise the lord and so i want us to know that the spirit realm is real the spirit realm is real and there is a constant interaction between the spirit realm and this realm every single one of us under the sound of my voice and those following us online every single one under the sound of my voice interacts with the spirit realm every time whether you recognize it or not the condition to to interact with the spirit realm is just to be alive remember i began the teaching last week showing us the five elements right the elements of creation we drink water is that true we breathe air why don't we breathe dust 
we breathe air to live air that seems to be immaterial but we breathe it in our material body to keep us alive so our biological composition is is a is a, a an intertwining of both this realm and the realm of the spirit prosperity is an intertwining of the spirit realm and this realm success in life is an intertwining of the realm of the spirit and this realm the anointing the ability and the agency of the spirit when a man stands and you look at somebody with cancer and stretch your physical hand you may not even make contact with the person and the person starts shaking or the person falls it tells you that there is something more than what your eyes see there is an interaction is that true watch this i'm speaking to you there is no di there is no digital connection between my mouth and your heart but what i am saying is passing through your ears and it has the ability to influence your paradigm because they are spirit and life hallelujah so we must we must rise to this reality that all we see in our world brothers and sisters is not all there is praise the lord all we see is not all there is there is more say there is more in this building right now inside and outside there are more angels than this crowd gathered here and many of them are doing many things as i teach right now some are imparting graces and all of these things right walking in partnership with the spirit and they are not only angels there are also the spirits of just men made perfect testifying like the witnesses that stood with jesus at the mount of transfiguration elijah and moses representing the law and the prophet they are not the only witnesses there are many others enoch for instance right many other people so the bible says ye are come on to mount zion and it begins to tell us all the things that happen in that place listen the earlier you realize that life is entirely spiritual that the physical manifestation is only a little portion hallelujah occultists understand this politicians understand this is that true I was I was studying the world religion I'll give you a few statistics as we progress very shocking I didn't know there was that much religion in the whole world I thought there were just maybe 100 or 1000 I will tell you the figure shortly <laughs> and all these religions have followers ardent committed die hard followers meaning the spirit of man is searching for something searching for a connection with its source somehow mankind knows that until you interact with this the spirit realm there is no stability to your person there is a longing so we pray to a deity we call different names for many religions and we hope that somebody out there of a higher consciousness is listening to us there are spiritual laws the same way I can violate gravity and violate other laws and reap the consequences of my disobedience or ignorance that is the same way I can stumble into a spiritual law I do not know and activate its operation unconsciously and suddenly begin to see certain things manifest physically are you hearing what I'm saying and then on the other hand I can deactivate the operation of a spiritual law without knowing and begin to receive a ripple effect in the physical are you following me now so it seems to me like the journey of many Christians is 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 a blind dashing into spiritual laws we are not exactly sure sometimes we touch something that activates prosperity and ha has that happened to you for weeks you find out that favor is coming everything is happening and then it's like something happens and it's short 
There are times that you find out that everything you say in prayer comes to pass. And then other times, you pray and it's as if you are talking to yourself. Hallelujah. There are times you suddenly step into a dimension and seasons and you are having dreams every night. And everything you see is coming to pass. And then certain times, what is responsible for this opening and closing of the gates of the spirit? This is what I want to teach you. The reality of spiritual things. Even for preachers, there are times you stand to preach and you sense an unusual open heaven. You are just ministering and my goodness, scriptures that you, you read years ago that you cannot even quote normally suddenly come to your mind and you are quoting them verbatim. And other times it looks like you stand and you are wondering, I hope I'm not messing up. Listen, if you get what I'm teaching you, you will keep certain portals of the spirit open perpetually. Certain people have touched this realm in different forms. Hallelujah. Now watch this. The fundamental principle I want us to understand as we explore this very sensitive teaching. Because what I'm going to be saying will rattle many of us. Hallelujah. Some of the things that I'm going to be saying will challenge us. But I want you to follow me. The fundamental principle I want you to have at the back of your mind is that everything created belongs to God. You will see the advantage of this statement as we progress. Everything created belongs to God. Secondly, all power belongs to God. Hallelujah. All power. Psalm 62 verse 11, please, quickly. Psalm 62 verse 11. It says, once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power everybody shout all power all power you went to school what is your understanding of all power meaning if there is any performance that ever occurs any manifestation of the supernatural in the earth to any degree was either a release or a corruption of power that came from God. Please follow me. God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God. Look up please. When a magician takes a white handkerchief. Please follow me tonight. And waves it. And brings out a dove out of it. What happened? What happened? Hallelujah. When a magician slices himself into half and holds the remaining half of him and is walking and bastardizes your knowledge of physics and biology, what exactly is happening? Listen to me. He said, once have I spoken. Twice. In other words, I emphasize it as a witness that all power belongs to God. That means the central force in the realm of the spirit is not astrology. It's not the constellation. The seat of power in the spirit is God himself. Just follow me. Every religion is the hybrid of a man's pursuit to uncover and look for this mystery entity that we call God. And over time, what has happened is, listen, fallen angels. You know, I spoke to you about the pre-Adamite dispensation. We spoke a bit about that, right? Realities that predate Genesis 1. You find that in Job 38, right? The creation, we spoke a bit now, last year, this year, the creation of angels and all of these things, right? Now watch this. Let me show you a few mysteries in the Bible. Have you read in your Bible that stars fought for a woman? called Deborah. Question, was she an unbeliever? <laughs> Have you had that thing that stars fought for Deborah? Have you had people mention statements like, you were born with 10 stars? Eh? Whether you believe it or not, just follow me. I'm not teaching you Scientology. I'm provoking you to be mature. Just listen to me. Are you following me now? 
many of us come from different cultural backgrounds where at one point or the other they have brought somebody to your house hello baba mama whatever they shall brought somebody to your house and he was able to do certain things whether he used coal or not whether he used whatever and he began to unveil certain things either reveal the person that stole is that true stole money or meat or lie is that true and then he began to reveal some things how many of you have seen people who are not born again? They have never given their life to Christ, yet they have functioned in what you know to be word of knowledge. Is that true? In certain tribes, they call them those whose head has opened. Is that true? People who can see beyond certain things. Listen. God has spoken once. Let it be known to you that when it comes to the realm of the spirit, there are not many forces. There is one force. Everything revolves around him. His name is God Almighty. Whether we accept to call him God Almighty or not. Are you getting my point now? Hmm. So how come Satan can manipulate power? How come traditional rulers can manipulate power? Please follow me. How come a man can look at this lady and say, look, um, you will not give birth. Case closed. He didn't ask her whether she had faith or not. He just spoke on the strength of something he has been taught. Is that true? How come people read magical books? Huh? All kinds of books. They tell them, recite this. And the moment they recite, things start happening. Brothers and sisters, am I telling a lie or? Pastors have been afraid of confronting this issue. Because if we don't, many of us will not know when we have entered witchcraft. If all power belongs to God, then whose power are witches using? Follow me. If all power belongs to God, then the religions that can turn there, there, there's the video of a young guy that walked upon water physically he walked upon it huh? he walked upon a building sideways and came down no pastor has done that at least I only know one bold pastor who decided his, he was prophet Daniel the one that lions tore him into pieces in the bad that. that's the closest thing that I know but the Bible says, once have I spoken, twice, that all. So, is it that God gave it to these demons? No, think about it. Go to Zaria city and meet somebody and say, I want a husband. What's that thing that they carry? Love portion, wealth portion, all kinds of, of things. They give you and one young man is just moving and they blow something towards him. He becomes absolutely confused right and starts pursuing a lady helplessly until she does whatever she wants to do with it now think about that if the bible is telling the truth that all power belongs to god i have a question by the way it will interest you to know that there are four thousand two hundred religions as of today in the world how many four thousand two hundred registered all the 4,200 religions. Where did they get their power from? Satan does not create anything. Is that clear? Do we all agree? Question. Was God sleeping? Did they steal some of the power without his seeing? What is the mystery behind the seeming strengthening of wicked forces? Some of you have dreams and you see all kinds of spirits appear to you. You are trying to call Jesus, they shut your mouth with all your knowing of Jesus. Jesus, and they stand and they laugh. Question, who empowered them? If Satan was created, <laughs> are you prepared for this year of the rain? We are going to talk, we are, we are going as deep as God will help us go because we must answer some questions. Let me tell you, when you answer these questions, you will, you, you will start laughing at what used to make you cry. Because when you see it, you know that uh -uh, this is the one plus one. This is what made it happen. And I told you that every time you catch a light, what happens in the spirit? 
grace is given to you to walk in that reality. So you can see five people struggling over a demon. Go out, go out, and you will only pass. No prayer. Light. The spirits know what they are seeing. You see that? Because the strength of evil is darkness. The Bible calls them rulers of darkness, not rulers of light. Whenever there is darkness, they are authorized to rule. All religions of the world claim to connect people to wealth, to joy, to happiness, to life, to peace, and to God. Or some kind of higher cosmic power for assistance. That's the whole bit behind every world religion. Is that not true? If somebody comes to take you now and says, Mary Ann, I want you to be part of the Confucius religion. You think you will just come? Won't I promise you something? I'll promise you wealth and happiness. I'll promise you that whatever you want, speak certain things and it will happen. Right? If Mary Ann speaks it and it happens, she will invite Shei and say, Shei, it's easier than that other thing you are doing. She, you first say, I don't believe it. When life presses her to the wall, she will adopt it. The strength of this religion is that the suffering of mankind is endless. And so eventually, people will search for solution anyhow. Are you getting me? By the way, many of these religions have their branches in Africa. You would think that our suffering or our, our backwardness in technology will make us say, what is all this? find out how many africans do they are not christians they are not muslims they are not hindus right they are something else and they have followers there is an acclaimed personality in this nation i i, I told you that i repented from mentioning names acclaimed personality who I think for 48 years or thereabout I don't know if it was him or, or his brother or somebody who never came out never came out for about 48 years look even if you are sitting down for 48 years how else somehow the devil must come upon you he must land upon your life and interact with you sacrifices that men have made now the question is Brothers and sisters, if God is good and God is great and he does not eschew evil, what would be the explanation to the seeming empowerment? Preachers have thought that the power you have, the power Satan has is your power or he collected it. How did he collect it? Collect it back. The question, how did he collect it? You know, we generalize things that we owe people. Demon is working with something that is solid and provable. Hallelujah. You prayed about something. The answer did not come. Your brother said, come, let's go and visit somebody. They visited the person in two days. The answer came. Is that true? It's true you gave Thanksgiving in church, but... We really know where that answer came from. Is that true? A woman cries to God, comes to we preachers, and we prophesy in the name of Jesus. I command that cancer to go. Nothing went. Is that true? They just respect us and they won't publish anything on the newspaper. And they quietly go and meet another person. And they invoke things and they have the baby and women of God come and claim the glory. It's better let's sit down and ask ourselves the truth and answer this question or keep telling lies there are many people telling lies in church many of the miracles people claim to get in church i am telling you they got it outside the church they consulted a lot of powers there are families today who will never give their children in marriage until they go and ask certain people and they confirm is that true whether, whether you are a pastor whatever you believe keep your westernization they will go and consult even if it means them buying goat, ram, sheep, human being, they will consult. Is that true? What then is this mystery? There are five religions, major religions, out of the 4,200. 
The first is Hinduism. The second is Buddhism. The third is Islam. The fourth is Christianity. And the fifth is New Age. There's no time and it's not within the scope of the teaching to tell you what this individual sect, if I would call them, believe. There are others who believe like the Hindus, for instance. Hindus believe there is one great God, but he expresses himself in many ways. Meaning there are many ways to approach him. Right? So they can have many kinds of deities or envoys that help you communicate to this God. And they believe in several doctrines of reincarnation. Buddhism. Many people think Buddhism worship Buddha. No. They just feel that Buddha is the person who has been able to attain that highest level of consciousness as they call it. And so they model after his life. Same with all the other religions. New age is the recent teachings that was perpetrated by the kingdom of darkness. Under new age, you are God. It's a, it's a little stealing away from the Bible. All these religions, there's no time. I would have proven to you that they all have their origin from the Bible. That's why they can prove to any Christians. That's why Christians are the most vulnerable. Is that true? They take Bible and show you what supports their belief. And you say, wow, this thing is in the Bible. Meaning God must support it. There comes that theory that all roads still lead to the same God. Have you heard those, those devilish teachings? And so people tell you, don't worry. When you go to the Habalists, you say, look, don't be scared with all this color not I'm doing. It's still the same thing. It's just different ways of invoking the same God. And then he invokes the color not and he says, Psalms 1 verse 3. I say, ah, Psalms, Abba. I know Psalms. Go ahead. Right? To now justify that because Psalms 1 was mentioned, God is in it. Is that true? What deceit. What deceit. All power belongs to God. Now watch this. I want you to know this. The fallen angels. Hallelujah. Those we call the fallen angels. I've taught us but I'll repeat it again just for the sake of establishing a few things. The fallen angels. When they came to the earth. Please listen to me. They interacted with men. And part of that interaction was responsible for supplying certain deep informations don't forget that they were all in heaven right certain laws are god's own laws and they are made to happen how many of you go to the farm and pray and fast for crops to grow please tell the truth after you sow you go back and say oh god no once you sow it to the earth you go back a man can kill another man and steal his land and sow and still reap a bumper harvest because of the existence of physical laws so it is god has put spiritual laws are you getting my point now for spiritual laws to work please come i'm establishing something come sam for spiritual laws to work in the spirit a spirit must assist you in activating its operation are you getting the rules for any spiritual law at all to work there must be a spirit entity that will assist you. It is in partnership with a spirit before any spiritual law can be activated. So if I am a magician and I'm doing a lot of abracadabra, for instance, there must have been a spirit that was invoked, appeased, or a demand is placed upon him. Is that true? Now, let's explain our traditional festivals. What happened? What is the whole goal of many traditional festivals? They first appease certain spirits, either with people who must die or sacrifices. And when those spirits are appeased, the mediums that interface between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm, let the people know that, ah, this goat, the spirit has, has eaten it. Although you are seeing a physical goat, the priest ends up eating the flesh physically uh, uh, the honorarium the, the, everything goes to the priest but i'm saying that the whole goal is that the sacrifice has been received is that true that's what happens no man by his strength can activate spiritual laws are you getting my point there must be the assistance 
of a spirit. Watch this. I want to shock you now. The Holy Spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual law. Just follow me. The Holy Spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws. The spirits of dead men can activate spiritual laws. Ancestral spirits can activate spiritual laws. Demons and spiritual wickedness that operate in the heavenlies, on the strength of the fact that they are spiritual entities, they can guide men. To activate spiritual laws watch this so there is a universal law in the spirit for anything to be of god and to carry to carry god's signature there is only one spirit that validates are you getting my point the holy spirit is the only spirit authorized the most holy spirit of god the only one authorized to activate any spiritual law such that God becomes involved and the glory goes to God. Are you getting my point? That means, watch this. It is possible that I can use magic power and look at Sam and do a miracle, a real miracle. It happens, but it did not happen by the Spirit of God. But because it is a manipulation of a spiritual law, it will happen accurately are you getting what i'm saying that means i can give a woman a child but not by the spirit of god is that true i can use the advantage of my partnership with another spirit and remove cancer from her stomach and put back another spirit that means i can receive word of knowledge from a spirit accurate word of knowledge but not from god are you are you getting what i'm saying when you understand this, listen to me, you will hold the Holy Spirit as a matter of life and death. Are you getting my point? Now, the problem with many men of God is when they started their journey, they started with the Holy Spirit. But they allowed their passion to make them leave the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Ghost said, wait, I'm schooling you in this area. They said, I'm in a hurry. I must enter prophecy. I must enter this Holy Ghost. You can go. And another Holy Spirit, another spirit, really not holy. Another spirit continued the journey. Are you getting the point? And because they seem to have been progressing in spiritual things, that spirit of deception made them feel that is the continuation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So although in them, they feel something is wrong. There is, there is a mixing. Many men of God in this country around that we call fake are not fake. Even those who do magic. Most of what has happened is a perversion. Are you getting me? They went under certain people. Certain hands were laid in them. And certain demonic forces were invoked to begin to work with them. And it activated certain possibilities. And they started gaining knowledge on certain laws. Is God helping us? Or are you afraid of the teaching? You will be changed. His glory will be revealed. When the Spirit takes over your soul. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed. When the Spirit I know you will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. For you are being changed. His glory is been revealed. When the Spirit takes over your soul. Listen, when you hear us talk a lot about the Holy Spirit and emphasize Him, it is because there are other spirits already. 
and if you do not embrace the spirit of god you will meet with another one eventually the day you need a job you will meet with one hear me look up you will never go to a herbalist and return the same way you came did you hear what i said you will never impossible every man communicates to you out of the strength of the spirit that assists him if you come to me for help and i'm a magician and you are watching me do the magic you finish and say nice man you think you just left but you did not leave alone automatically that's why you will return again someone makes you return. the people inside and outside both those who wanted to come or did not come the spirit of the living god drew you is that true when you understand these brothers and sisters you will not be impressed just by everything that happens physically you will seek to know what is the motivation and the spirit behind the operation many of us are are very once you see supernatural things you are happy it doesn't matter whether it came from the pit of hell or wherever you are just happy right and right now we live in a generation where many people want to enter prophecy young people want to enter prophecy and 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 they want to enter world of knowledge they want to enter dimensions now nothing is wrong with that it's because of the revival that is coming but satan is already preparing a major deception because he has seen it that's one of the reasons why i'm teaching this there is a major arsenal of deception that the devil wants to release to the nigerian church where there will be an outburst of a seeming outpouring but it's not the outpouring of the holy ghost and you will see men move in charismatic dimensions you will see people do things like angels right almost no limits to their impossibilities and even they themselves will not know that they are being deceived are you seeing why the book of revelations and the rest prays that even the elect can be deceived I have prayed for many people in meetings anointed people ministers of the gospel and as i minister to them i may never get to tell them but they may think what they are receiving in that meeting was impartation what they were receiving was first deliverance from a strange spirit acts chapter 16 don't turn there remember a lady who had the spirit of divination is that true did she give people word of knowledge please answer me and the bible says when some businessmen found her they said you are exactly what you are looking for and they started using her you pay money to prophesy you think if the people were not getting results they will come back they were getting results she will say this will happen and it will happen and when paul i like paul so two spirits paul had a word of knowledge her too she had her own word of knowledge two spirits right and paul looks at her and she begins to say these are great men of god you know what she was looking for she was looking for partnership because human beings cannot discern the difference so that she knew that paul was only visiting the city so let's be friends so that when you leave the city they will say ah, ah if paul is not here i am here pastors hear me you must be careful in this day and age the kinds of meeting and ministerial associations you join yourself with there are many of us they invite you everywhere to preach with everybody and your answer is yes sir you think you are saving sinners you will enter the midst of devils without knowing and they will corrupt the authenticity of the grace of god upon your life are you getting what i'm saying it will be a three-day meeting you will be the one to start first you will start and there will be mighty signs and wonders when you finish devils will come and hug you and you will snap together and then the next day people will come and they'll say just like the servant of god ministered yesterday we are continuing and people will catch strange spirit there are meetings people have gone to the moment they left the meeting lost came upon their lives and they started looking for ladies uncontrollably they fell under the anointing they rolled around and prayed in tongues and the brother got up with miracle power and love for girls confusion how can i be moving so much in the anointing right or somebody gets up and just begins to steal the reality of spiritual news 
we constantly interact with this law. Watch this. Spiritual laws are very powerful because they are not only creative, they can change realities in this physical realm. Are you following my teaching now? That is the reason why a magician can hold a handkerchief and say, Sam, hold it. They say, roll it. And Sam will roll it. And Sam will bring out a fowl. How does handkerchief change to a fowl? Right? What they simply did was to take advantage of the laws of creation and manipulate it. Are you getting my point? And what is the goal? The goal is to convince you to come into partnership with the spirit that is assisting them. The spirit that is assisting them is not assisting them for nothing. I hope you know that. When Jesus was on the earth, he was not the only one doing miracles. I hope you know. Remember there was a certain time the disciples were angry and they were complaining that there are some people that are doing miracles somewhere oh, Jesus, you are the happening man. Where did this, and we are your other people. So if it's not you, it should be us. Where are these strangers coming from again? And Jesus made a very controversial statement. He said, whoever is not, what? Against us is for us. Ah! Spiritual laws. So Deborah could look at the stars and say, stars... I understand what you represent to the inhabitants of the earth. Align yourself in a way that the powers that the men use for war will not work. And the Bible says the stars fought for Deborah with the permission of God. Joshua, my namesake in the Bible, what happened to him? He looked at the sun and said, if this sun goes down, they are going to kill our people. Because of that, sun stands still. Right? Daniel went to bed and the secret was revealed. And he said, oh king, I know what you saw. You saw a being, an image stand with the head of gold, the breastplate of silver, and you saw clay mixed with metal at his feet. And he began to describe the fall of different empires, the Christian empire, the Babylonian empire, and down to the new age, that attempts to communicate towards virtual reality. That's the last empire. The feet that is a mixture of clay and iron. One side the government is soft. On another side the government is hard. It's a mystery. He saw it described. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. The, the proof that God is in a thing is not just in the result. But the spirit that initiates and sustains that process. This is where I'm driving at. The proof that a thing is of God. The Holy Ghost must be both the initiator and the sustainer of that spiritual process. Otherwise, it is fetish, it is demonic, it is from darkness. Even if it produces a real result, I'm giving you the reason now. Is producing a real result because it was the manipulation of a physical law or a spiritual law. And because of the advantage of the superiority of the realm of the spirit over the physical realm, it will produce results. Watch this. Every spirit that initiates a process leaves a signature of itself upon that process. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When Julius Baga builds... What do they leave? They build their, their logo. Is that true? If PW builds, they leave everything. Meaning, if Satan gives a child, he will leave his signature. Right? If Satan heals the sick, he will leave his signature. When you know this, you will know the reason why many people do not experience complete deliverance or complete healing. Or many, there are many reasons. But the major reason is because Satan comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. So although he uses spiritual law, there must be darkness in his operation. 
So Satan will give you a miracle that will create another problem. Right? One miracle that creates another problem and you come to him. He gives your family money and then gives another person the spirit of drunkenness. When you come as drunkenness is being solved, barrenness follows. Right? There is a signature. One law being activated and causes another one. That's why it is the blessing of the Lord that can make rich and the, there will be no sorrow. There is always a signature of darkness that signs upon whatever comes from Satan. Please hear me tonight. Not every open door is anointed. The fact if you force a door in the spirit, it will open. Thank you, Jesus Christ. There are secular musicians that sing. And for those of us who used to listen to their songs or those who listen around as we pass by, when you hear their voices, you know that this voice is, it has a glory that is not physical. Are you getting me? Spiritual laws manipulated, but they must pledge allegiance to the spirit that assisted them. That's why you listen to the music and physically you receive the glory that looks like from heaven, but it does something to your spirit, man. Because those laws help Satan to continue his agenda in the earth. Is God speaking to us tonight? So number one, realize that there are spiritual laws. Number two, realize that no man can activate the operation of spiritual laws until assisted by a spirit entity. Number three, there are many spirits that can activate spiritual laws. Spirits of the dead. All kinds of fallen spirits. But God has only one spirit that is permitted, authorized to search his heart and activate these laws according to his counsel for man. And the name of that spirit is the spirit of the living God. Is the Holy Ghost, spirit of the living God. Is the whole is number one. We have not allowed the spirit of God to teach us these operations of the spirit so that we can align ourselves with these laws of the spirit. I may just touch on one of the law, maybe two of the laws. Really, we'll just touch on two of those spiritual laws and then we'll just end because I want us to pray. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Laws of the spirit. Watch this. This guy is playing this. Did you know that he's activating a law, a spiritual law? What he's playing is a language. Your senses don't understand, but your spirit understands it. That's why you want to sit down and keep listening to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The melodies. You know why many people are addicted to secular music? Honestly, it's not just that they are bad people is that those melodies are languages they draw your spirit but because those who sing them have fraternized with certain spirits they draw you and they induce the operation of certain strange spirits so you hear him play what he's playing he's playing the strings and he's, he's doing something to your spirit man if a heavily sits down and plays you will keep enjoying and you will fall down but not under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You will fall down and stand up and something will land on you. Are you getting that now? So it matters what spirit you sit under. It matters what spirit produces the result that you celebrate. It matters not just that results are being produced. Brothers and sisters, hear me. If we do not rise to understand the laws of the spirit, we who are the sons of light, I want you to know that many people will run to the devil and he will give them the result they want by operating spiritual laws and take their souls in exchange. If we do not rise to contend for the power and the grace that will cause fruitfulness in the life of women, they will go to Babalawos every day. We can be grumbling and be calling everybody fake and calling everybody. We have to be careful because some of us are the ones who are fake. 
not just because we are going to have a list but we have refused to hold on to that which is real see that praise the Lord the Holy Spirit must be the initiator and the sustainer of every spiritual knowledge we receive this becomes our only guarantee to escape perversion the Holy Spirit is the only guarantee that will escape perversion. Please let me surprise you and understand me. You can take just this Bible verbatim without the presence of the Holy Spirit. You can still hold, get into error. Are you getting me? You can still hold the Bible blindly and you will still get into error. There are many people who go to Habalis. I counsel a lot of people. And some people come and meet me and they or their children or wives have gone to Habalis. And they say they go to the Habalis and they see many books and they see Holy Bible. Holy Bible was produced by a publishing company. Some of the people who produce this thing are not even born again. Is that true? They are just doing business. Zondervan or whatever publishing company. But it is the presence of the spirit of the living God. Meaning a demon spirit can still come upon this and give it another interpretation. That's why every sect of the Christian faith uses this. But they got another interpretation by the interaction of strange spirits. Genesis 11. That's what happened to Nimrod Kush, the origin of witchcraft. Nimrod Kush, these fallen angels appeared to him. In fact, before Genesis 11, the days of Noah... The Bible says strange aliens started coming upon the earth. Is that true? And they started sleeping with the daughters of men. Brothers and sisters, our ladies are smart people. Do you think an angel will just come with wings and horn and say, um, Marianne, I'm in love with you. Wouldn't you run? If you see a beast with tail, with horn, says, I'm, before he says, I'm in love, you will run away. These beings were not daft. They came and walked like men. I told you angels don't have wings. And there is no record of angels with wings in the Bible. Those who have wings are cherubims. In fact, angels appeared with people. They ate with people in the Bible. Is it not true? Angels ate with people in the Bible. When the angel appeared to Mary, she didn't say, I'm afraid. She wondered what the salutation, not the angel. Meaning they had been seeing them. When the angel appeared to Zechariah and all of these kinds of people, it is the seraphs that cover cartoon films have have created these things based on their interpretation and now we're not criticizing them but they have not helped us to understand the reality of spiritual things <clears throat> hallelujah are we following now ah i sense the presence of god there are so many spiritual laws i want you to know that if I ask you what are the physical laws, you would name them. Sir Isaac Newton, in his study of mechanics, came up with several laws, right? There are the, the are fundamental laws, the first, second, third law. There are all kinds of laws. Laws of thermodynamics, conservation of matter, physics and chemistry has all kinds of law. Newton's law of universal gravitation. There are all kinds of law. Chemistry, Le Chatelier's principle of equilibrium. All kinds, the Schrodinger equation. All of these things are men and women coming together in an attempt to explain laws. There are laws that guide our understanding into quantum physics. Right? When we do chemistry, qualitative analysis, and all of that we try to use the colors or or the things that emanate from solutions to be able to help us know what um, ion or whatever it is that is there all of these are physical laws in the same way there are spiritual laws spiritual laws spiritual laws bless you sam sir hallelujah let's touch on two of these laws can we I read an article there is a powerful series on finance when we are teaching that one we'll share it but let me give you the preview the anchor scripture to that that series is thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over 
there was a relationship between the anointing on his head and the running over of the cup. Thou anointed my head with oil and my cup running over. Hallelujah. Now, a wealthy man was once asked what the secret of his wealth was. And I got to find out that all he said was he found an ancient manual right a manual that dates 2300 years ago written by a greek philosopher that manual they seem they said seem to contain some magic powers that even if you read just the title alone fortunes will begin to come to you I know some of you with all this message will say, where is that manual? I can ask God for forgiveness. Where is that manual? <laughs> Repent, this is the year of the rain. Many of you have, have suffered. It doesn't matter what. Where is that? Some of you will go and browse it after this, <laughs> this meeting. Is there an online version? Let me go come and read it and come for miracle service. Hallelujah. That means... You know what these Illuminati and secret societies and all these occultic organizations do? They are men and women who interacted with these spirit beings. And they reveal to them a lot of these spiritual laws. They reveal to them that this universe is not just sand. They reveal to them that air is not just air. Water is not just water. And they have excellently archived this principle through centuries. Right? Let me tell you. These were the very principles that kings used. Did you hear that in ancient times, king had, kings had scrolls and certain things were written. In fact, part of the writings were magic formulas that would open certain doors. You see them in some of the films that you watch. All these things were an aberration of spiritual laws. What does that tell you? That means truly all things are available for life and godliness. If we can allow the Holy Spirit to take the word of God and guide us all things are really possible hallelujah one of the most prominent business law among many business people is what they call the law of attraction i i, I don't believe it in that sense and that law teaches that it is is a is an extension of of newton's law of universal gravitation that the earth is a living thing right and it begins to say all kinds of things and it credits the power to modern nature it makes it look like modern nature is supervising our, our, our activities. That's, that's demonic from the pit of hell. The devil will never give credit to God. And they have used it and made children brilliant in school. They have used those laws. How many of you have, 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 have seen all these things they spoke about? Uh, they speak about hypnotism and all of this. So I know I'm stretching you tonight. Some of you are wondering, who am I now? Am I a Christian? No, <laughs> Listen, I'm training you because one day many of you who want to go abroad, you will go abroad and you will look for living faith and dunamis and redeem. You will not find anywhere. The only one you will find is a temple. A temple you must greet the priest to resume your work. And once you go there, they will look at you and when you will not bow, they will ask you questions. And you say, in Koinonia, I was taught ABC and they laughed. They say, really? You know, lack of exposure is what is making some of us comfortable with this our Christianity. Because we think the whole world is like Zaria. When you go out of this place and see the way people hate God, you will know you need more to stand. Is that true? That's why God refused you from going abroad. Because you would have, you would have, you would have converted. Two days you would, have, you would have left God. By the time they bamboos your mind, and then they tell you, okay, just read this portion and you read this portion and you go out and people start calling you from Nigeria and sending you money so what is going on ah. say let me read the other part that I didn't read again you think you won't do it hallelujah and the Holy Spirit has guided me through these spiritual laws a lot of them have been preached in the body of Christ but even those who have preached them have not preached them with the level of revelation and gravity. They just preached them because one person had another man of God preach it. Hallelujah. Number one, my goodness. Psst. 
Pray in tongues for one minute. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Something is about to change in your life now. I've had several encounters through the word of God. I'm about to share with you. I've read it in books over the years. But when God began to open me up to it, it changed my life forever. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Let's see how far God will help us. We have to stop somewhere to pray. What you are about to learn must change you. I'm telling you, you will be so changed, you will be surprised. Many of you will carry the presence of God. You will carry the glory of God. You will see breakthroughs happen in your life in ways that will surprise you. Everybody read, please. One, two, read. Just the first portion, the first clause, one to read. Listen, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, it didn't say so he will become, so he already is. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he. I learned and I have seen it. I taught the heads of department during our retreat a bit of it and the Lord has permitted me to share this now. That your life, listen to me, your environment and the quality of your life is a reflection of both your mindset and the sum total of your belief system. Listen to me. Your life, the quality of your life today the quality of your life, the quality of your environment, the quality of the works of your hands and the things that you do is a direct reflection of your ideologies, a direct re reflection of your perceptions about God, about life, about wealth, about whatever it is. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, that means your life will eventually open up and reveal to the physical what is in your heart. A powerful spiritual law that your life and your environment will eventually become a reflection of your reality. My goodness. My goodness. That means heaven is a revelation of God's mindset. Heaven is a reflection of the excellency of his thought. Earth is a reflection of the mindset of mankind. Selfishness. Watch this. I don't know if it was last week or so that, that I said it. I think I shared it during the retreat. Take a security man. Is that true? Take him to the office. Assuming you have a, a corporation with three story buildings the last story building belongs to the ceo take the security man to that story building leave him there for two weeks that office will start reflecting his mindset right immediately because when the man sits on that chair his mindset will refuse that reality first he will feel he does not qualify for it and then second, he will be afraid because he would think that after a while they will come and take it. So he will say, let me steal and loot. The first thing is he will remove whether, what did I say that day? Stabilizer. He will steal the stabilizer and run away and sell it. And say, how can you put a big stabilizer, 10,000? I mean, the, the light is regulated from Nepal on or, or what, what they call him? Power holding company. Praise God. So he will steal it. The next time he will see a beautiful artwork and he will say, how much will they sell this one? Please? He said, 20,000. I said, go and sell it. There are two. Sell one and leave one. Right? You give him a glass cup. He says, no. Package them together. Let's sell it. Buy me a rubber cup, please. I'm, I'm contented. His mindset is already playing out. He will step into the place dirty and won't clean it. Right? 
he will eat food and leave it there. He will lead that document. He will take any piece of paper and clean water with it, not knowing what the document is. At the end of two weeks, that office has reflected his ideology. That's why those who get who wants to be a millionaire, none of them ends up being a true millionaire after five years because what they, are, what they have gotten does not subscribe to the truth, the principles that brought it. You never become wealthy by receiving dash money. I'm telling you this. There are people who receive 100,000 every month, maybe from parents or well-wishers. But the revelation they have about prosperity, about God, about money, drives wealth away from them. Is that true? Are you getting me? There are men of God whose churches, you will never see miracles happen because there is a mindset about miracles they have that will never allow the Holy Spirit to bless people. Is that true? They don't want to see anybody fall under the anointing. They don't disturb us with noise. We want order in this church. And because of that, although they are God-fearing, the Holy Spirit wants to do great things for their ideology. So listen to me. The only way to change your life is to change your mindset and your perception. Listen to me. I was teaching the leaders and I taught them this. I told them, do you know why some ministries have the best of everything? Have you wondered why? You see certain ministries, the best keyboardists, the best um, computer um, people, the best sound people. Let me tell you why. Because the, the, the mindset of that man, right, will bring to that ministry people who are consistent with his ideology. There goes the same birds of the same feathers. Do what? So the Bible says this. In Proverbs chapter 4 now, right? 4 verse 23, it says, guard your heart. You see that? With all diligence. This is the Bible. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are what? The issues. The quality of your life is locked up within your mindset. I believe God for anything. I believe God can take this ministry to any height. Hallelujah. I do not ever believe that there can be limitations in the work of God. That's my mindset. Right? That's why you see members of living faith. For instance, they are men of faith. Because they are a reflection of the conviction of the founder. Being a man of rugged faith. It's in living faith you hear that a man died and they carried him and rubbed oil from his head to his toe till he came back. And they come to testify. Do you have the gods to do that kind of thing? It's in living faith you hear that a man died and for three days his wife was with the man on the bed and said, you are still my husband, you are alive. And after three days he comes back to life. He did not need to necessarily change them. He first changed himself. Listen, if you are not changed... Your words will not carry power. Your words only reflect the authority based on the change that has occurred in you. That's why, see, let me tell you, if Creflo Dollar or any of these people who are really well, they come right now and teach you on prosperity, some of you will be crying and you will hate poverty forever. Not necessarily because what they are sharing is deep. They are communicating their reality. If Sam comes and holds the mic and begins to worship, what he is reflecting to you is an overflow of his reality. The deposit of the anointing within him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why you can listen to another musician and nod your head. And Frank Edwards, for instance, can sit on his keyboard and play the same song and you are crying. Brothers and sisters, leaders influence people by becoming the change they want the people to be. Right? That means... When I become convicted by my ideologies, it will influence your perception and it will be easy to change you. That's why the more successful a man becomes, the easier it becomes to influence others. Because his life now has sufficient testimonies. Are we getting blessed? Many of us want to see changes in our lives in 2015. Hear me. Change will never come 
if you are still blaming people. You and God in partnership with his word are the only requirements for that change to come. If you do not allow the word of God to renew your mindset, I promise you, you will never get anything in your life that has not first become a reality and a deposit in your spirit. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That's where it is out of this that all kinds of religions bring a lot of metaphysics and what they call um, astral meditation, right? So they tell you, put a picture of the, the jeep and you look at it and say, ah! They say, now see yourself in the jeep. They say, I'm driving. You see, that is madness. But I'm only trying to tell you that they stole those laws. They are an aberration, a corruption of spiritual laws. That's why whenever God wants to bless a man, God convinces you and makes sure you agree with him. If you don't agree with him, it will never happen in your life. For a long time, God kept telling Abraham, I want to change you. Abraham could not get it because of his idol worship mentality. And God said, come out. I don't know what to do. To come out. He said, start counting the stars. Abraham was counting. And he was seeing a count and miss. God said, do it. Just continue. And his mind was acclimatizing. And Abraham said, wow. And the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. When the angel appeared to Gideon, Gideon said, oh, don't deceive me. The angel took time. He didn't quarrel Gideon because he knew that if Gideon did not agree with him, nothing would happen. And Gideon said, I need proof. Let the cloth be wet. Let the ground be dry. He said, no problem. If that's what it takes to adjust your mindset to authorize us, go ahead. And Gideon said, now don't be offended. Let the cloth be dry. I, I want to convince myself. When Mary said, how shall these things be? Gabriel owed her an explanation and it took time to explain. And she said, I believe. Although I've never seen how a woman gives birth without a man, but I believe. And he said, be it unto me according to your word. Instantly she got pregnant. Zechariah had seen a lot of spiritual laws. That's why when he doubted Gabriel, he said, let's shut the mouth of this man. He's going to use the next spiritual law I'm about to teach you to change what we want to do. Is somebody learning something? Hear me. This is what makes ministry easy. I never spend time just wondering how do we publicize to get crowd. Koinonia will be a reflection of the quality of both the spiritual, the intellectual, and the physical ideologies of the leaders. You change a system by changing the leaders. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of our fathers did not change themselves. They took one bottle of Buddha and slapped you when you took one cup. Did you change? You see that? Because they have become a reality for you and they are saying, if I catch you drinking, that's the day I will kill you. Go and buy me Buddha, Joe. They just finished talking to you and they said, go and buy it. Please hear me. If you want to see changes in your life, you are going to have to find out what ideologies have kept me where I am. There are some of you who never believe God can bless you. Right? As you're looking at me right now, if God even says he will give you 100,000, you say, Amen. You know that kind of unbelieving Amen. Listen, let's not make God look like a liar. This is the year of the rain. There are some of you who God wants you to walk in levels of anointing you have never seen. There are some of you who want to God wants you to walk in certain depths. But do you believe him? There is nothing God has told me that I've not believed. I don't announce things till I'm sure I've believed it. When I believe it, I don't care who believes it again. So be it. The word of the Lord will come to pass. When God told Noah, he said, rain is coming. Build an ark. Do you think Noah just said, yes, sir? No. Noah would have said, God, my name is Noah. Your name is Yahweh. You're, you are almighty. We are not the same. Convince me. Convince me. When Noah was convinced, after 120 years, based on X timing, he still didn't give up. We talk about Abraham who waited 25 years. What of Noah? 
Noah waited 120 years. I'm sure people will say, look, when we were 50 years, when I gave birth to three children, this stupid man was busy building this ark. He has been searching for gopher wood around the whole world to build, searching for gum, searching for a lot of things. And then when he finished, we now saw him going to the jungle, looking for every kind of bed. Imagine what they would have told his wife. Say, madam, did you have to marry this man? But listen, one day, one day, his confidence in God showed him. Listen, you may be tight in now. You are seeing what God is doing in your life. You are seeing the anointing of the Spirit upon your life. It may not show. The Bible says, why we look not at the things that are what? Seen. But the things that are unseen, I'm giving you a scriptural proof. It said, for the things that are seen are what? Temporal. That means there is a level of confidence and renewal that can change anything you see before you. Brothers and sisters, do you believe this? Pastor Jakes is here, he will testify. Right from when the ministry, this used to be all of us, who form a, Aaron is here, who form a circle and all just sit down on the floor. I made certain statements like a fool. Right? But today, and listen, this is not even it yet. You wait and see what God will do with us. Oh, I believe him. I believe him. Absolutely. Carve upon my heart this truth that sets me free according to your do you know your academic situation can change please i'm speaking to somebody do you know your destiny can change if you keep thinking we are the helpless nigerians i guarantee you after 50 years you will celebrate golden jubilee suffering but i will feed nations huh i may be robbing granite oil as 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 vaseline but a day will come why we look not Brothers and sisters, as I look at you, I don't see the weak you. That's why I say, as I look at you, I see nations. Nations. Who told you you will not be the mother of nations? I'm 30 years. So what? So what about 30 years? Would you stand and say, I saw. When I was 23, I know that the Lord told me I'm giving birth to a prophet. And it's going to arise. That vision is still there. I am convinced. Yeah, the things that we see are subject to change. One day you are taking your bath and you see growths and tumors all around your body. You just say, hey, this is how I'm going to die. Cancer. And the devil said, not just cancer, fibroid, fibroid. Notice, do you know that many sick people may carry certain sicknesses for years and never fall sick? Because doctor has not told them. Now doctors don't be, don't be sad. I'm just saying because you, do, you did not know it was not your reality. Many men were carrying prostate cancer. Carrying all kinds of things. Many ladies carrying fibroids. Carrying a lot of things and nothing happened to them. But the day they looked and said, do you know? Do you really know the implication of SS? Are you aware that the way that this has been happening, you won't get a child? In fact, the way we are looking, cat is your womb self. It's not looking like the womb of a human being. You just say, ah. And you now start saying, that means no marriage. A godly brother comes and you say, my brother, I'm pitying you. you. I don't want you to suffer in this life. Reality. I hope you are laughing and you are, see, I'm telling you the secret to some of these results that you see. These are my contemplations. Those who know me know that my reality is defined. I never surround myself with nonsense. You don't come around me gossiping and, and, gossiping and speaking because I know that I am absolutely in control. This has become the mirror to my world. This is how I see things. I only see things consistent. When I'm going for a meeting, I know there will be an outpouring of the Spirit. I don't care whether they have faith or not. I don't care whether they can believe or not. 
whether they are instrumentalists to charge the atmosphere or not is irrelevant. When I step there, I know that I bring an atmosphere. I carry my own spiritual climate. Me and the Holy Spirit, a team. The workers in this ministry have received of this spirit. That's why in the afternoon they arrange chairs and they dress. Who guaranteed them that you were coming? Did you sign a form? We have in the same spirit of faith as it is written. Koinonia, hear me tonight. We are only 23 or 24 days into January. You can sit down with this, your belief system, and you will celebrate Christmas in this condition. Or you can rise up. Ah, but I know people who love God, they have died. I know people who love God, things have happened. Brothers and sisters, we are talking about you here, not your neighbor. The just shall live by his faith. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? I read a story of somebody 109 years, still alive. In fact, three women. They were even putting makeup. 109 years. Ah! Alive and strong in the midst of this wicked world. They don't expect. What do you expect in your life? See, these are powerful spiritual laws. The second law, give me five minutes. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Quickly please. The creative power of words. I know that we have been taught that words are powerful. But I want to show you the spiritual dimension of words. There is a reason why God called himself the word. Do you know why God named himself the word? It says, and God did what? And God, not and God wished. Not and God expected. Not and God complained. He said the earth was dark and void and formless. And God, the talking spirit, said. The word said there doesn't mean and God declared. What it meant was God commanded it to be so. The word said there does not just mean and God recited. No, God didn't recite anything. Say I'm healed, I'm healed. That's recitation. You are not talking. What many people have been talking in the body of Christ that they are calling confession is recitation. I'm telling you this. Con the word confess comes from the Greek word homologio. It's not just repeat what you say. It's you are given an empowerment to say it. I prophesy as I was commanded. He said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And you read the verses down the line. It says, and God said, and he saw. And God said, and he saw. And God said, and he saw. Listen to me. Words are powerful. Because when you speak a word, it activates spiritual laws and activates other laws. Listen to me. There are many laws that make realities to work. The key to activating their operation is in words. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when you speak, whether you realize it or not, something is loosed and something is tied. It depends on what is loosed and what is tied. Please follow me. The Bible says, how did he put it now? Whatsoever you bind, right? Do you bind just by tying a rope? Jesus looked at a fig tree and he didn't need to say, the law of fruitfulness sees operation from this tree. The law of regeneration. Stop. I command the fertilizer. Don't enter the root again. He just used words and activate all the laws that needed to be activated for that tree to shrink. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So instead of learning all the laws, God gives you the keys that activates them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when I declare and I say, I am healed. I release a lot of spiritual laws. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we stand now and I declare, I say in the name of Jesus, the power of God will start moving in this place. Suddenly you hear people falling and shouting. Why didn't it happen now? Listen, 
the words that I'm speaking are activating both the operation of angels, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Our words activate the dimension of God that is revealed in a meeting. That's why when during miracle service, the worship people sing songs that invoke that dimension. Are you getting what we're saying? If you know this, you will know that from morning till night, some of you have activated woes and tragedies in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, let's, let me show you a few scriptures at time. Uh, I've been fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. We've been closing so late. We'll see what we can do about it. It's just the passion in my heart. Psalm 141 verse 3. Media, please help us. Let's rush so that we get up and round up. Psalms 141 verse 3. It says, set a watch, O Lord, before where? And do what? Keep a door. Knowing that every time I speak, my mouth didn't just open. A door opened in the spirit. The opening of my mouth is the opening of a door in the spirit. It says, set a watch. Oh God, this my mouth can lead me in trouble. So set a watch. Set a watch over my mouth. Numbers chapter 14 verse 28. Zipra to kashila kariata ko sopra de katayana ba. Vinde ke sila kariaba. Numbers 14 verse 28. Very quickly. Everyone read. Want to read. 28, 28. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so I will do what? As I hear you say, not wish, he said, let the redeemed of the Lord. He already called you redeemed, but he said, say it. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Let the anointing of the, the anointed of the Lord say so. They are not reminding themselves. They are activating that reality. Everybody say, when I speak, I activate realities. Say it again. When I speak, I activate spiritual laws. That's right. It depends on what law you activate. But something must be activated. When you understand this, you will know that words are expensive. Let's look at just two more verses. Proverbs 18, verse 21. If we can look at that. Proverbs 18. You can write it down. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Listen. Death and life are where? Did he say death and life are on top of your head? Did he say death and life are? He says death and life are in the power. The proceeds of the tongue. And like a seed. They that love it shall eat the fruit that grows from that seed. The Bible says the seed is the word. In the parable of the sower. What is the seed? Meaning every time you speak, you sow the seed. Is that true? It said the seed is the word. So when I begin to speak, even in tongues I'm sowing, I'm activating laws in the spirit. When I begin to pray, my day is blessed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I am lifted. I'm activating spiritual laws. And I authorize the spirit of God to begin to schedule opportunities. To schedule certain things. And you find out that after prayer, you activate laws of favor. As you are stepping out, you bump into your destiny helper. You call it coincidence. The Bible calls it life that your tongue released. That's why Job said, what I have feared most has come upon me. Proverbs 13 verse 3. Proverbs 13 verse 3. Please, let's read it together. He that keepeth his mouth. Stop. How do you keep your life? 
insurance answer me i'm not against insurance do life assurance life insurance but the bible the written word of god the living logos he that keep how do you keep your life in the spirit by keeping your mouth papa Hagin said this kenneth copeland said this those guys said these things so many people i speak life i speak life I speak life. He said, I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing, but I can only advise you, choose. He said, he that keepeth his mouth, keepeth what? He said, but he that openeth wide his lips, speaking nonsense any day, any time, and saying it does not matter, he says that he shall have what? As a fruit. Brothers and sisters, listen. Ladies, when we, are wait, when we are about to pray, in the midst of your prayer, you will lay your hands on your womb and pray and say, no devil. No devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you are afraid right now. The rate at which ladies are scared of fibroid is alarming. You are just eating too much. You look at your stomach and say, this, this, thing, this is how it starts. I have the power to create and I have the power to destroy. The power of words is in its ability to activate spiritual laws. That's what I want you to know. Many of us have been taught that words are powerful, but what makes it powerful? Words are keys in the spirit. They activate laws. So now, it's not just blind confession. Oh, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. As if you are reciting a magic formula. No, that's madness. You speak out of the abundance of knowledge that when I declare that I am blessed, I am activating something. You wait until we have the other series that we have. There are so many things that you will learn this year. Two laws you have learned tonight. The first one is that there are spiritual laws. And that one of the laws, listen, is that to change your outside, you change what is inside stop wasting your time whatever you don't like outside get the renewal the mind component of what you want outside bill johnson got it right when he wrote the book the supernatural power of a transformed mind i don't expect this ministry to ever go down we will keep speaking it we will keep rising i expect every one of you in this year to break on every side and whenever i pray for you that's what i pray I don't pray blindly and say, Lord, eh, your will be done. I know what his will is. His will is not fake. His spirit has revealed his will in his word. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. We will pray for just five minutes. But I want us to take this serious because as we are praying, something will be happening to you. Lift your voice and thank him for the word. The reality of spiritual laws. Bless him. Bless him for the word. Don't trivialize what you have received. It has changed kings. It has made champions. You only arise and shine when your light comes. And then the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Hallelujah. Three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. You are going to say, Lord let the ministry of the holy ghost be strong in my life so that you will open me up to these deep mysteries lift your voice and pray pray no matter your spiritual level even if you are just visiting for the first time pray from the depths of your heart Please pray inside and in the overflow. 
Lift your voice and pray. It's the year of the rain. Holy Spirit, overshadow me in a new dimension. Open me up to the mysteries and the depths and the dimensions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, whatever needs to change in my life for my the quality of my life to change, let the word of God change it. Change my inner reality. Change my mindset. Lift your voice and cry passionately. Your life is at the mercy of this prayer. Lord, I desire a new level of excellence. A new level of grace. A new level of possibility in my life. Go ahead and pray. Help me to believe in you. Help me to believe in you. Help me to believe in you as the healer. Help me to believe you are able. Help me to believe you are mighty. Change my mindset. Change my perception. Change my perception about prosperity. Change my perception about protection. Change my perception about spiritual power. Change my perception about my academics. Change my perception about my marriage. Change my perception about my ministry, about my business, about my job about my husband about my wife about my organization lift your voice and pray your life is a reflection an eventual reflection of your convictions of your perception oh it's a powerful spiritual law i pray you believe it i pray you believe it Last prayer point. Father, imprint in my spirit the revelation that my words are powerful. Go ahead and pray. Imprint in me. Lord, I cancel every negative word that I've spoken in my life. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Confessions I made when I was angry. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Dangerous laws I activated that killed favor in my life. Confessions that killed my prayer life. Confessions that killed my, my integrity. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. Outside, make sure you are praying. No matter how far you are. No matter how far you are. Connect with us in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, find a neighbor and for the next one minute, I'd like you to activate laws over that person's life. Activate favor. Activate grace. Activate hunger for spiritual things. Close every door of witchcraft. Close every door of failure. Find a serious neighbor that came to Koinonia to pray. Lift your voice and pray. I bless this house in the name of Jesus. I command favor upon your people. I command favor. I command long life. 
I sow seeds of greatness. I sow seeds of power. I release the operation of the Holy Ghost upon lives, upon families. I command supernatural dreams. I command visions. I release encounters with the Holy Ghost. Encounters with the spirit of might. Encounters of favor. Encounters of power. I command no death. No accident. No terrorism. No bomb blast. No witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. I command every law that has been activated that is being manipulated by darkness over your life to bring failure to bring woes i cancel it by the blood of the eternal covenant bless your neighbor i bless you i bless you i bless you let the fountain of the heavens be open for you let men look for you. May they bless you. May you become the subject of discussion. I bless your academics. I change your result. I change your genotype. I command promotion to your job. Increase in your ministry. Increase in your business. Increase in your anointing. anointing sent to you. So believe his prophets. Are we together? There were many widows in Zarephath. Elijah was looking for just one. Habba prophet. What of other women? <clears throat> I love them. I can pray. I can intercede. May God bless you. Do A, B, and C. But I'm looking for a woman of Zarephath. Where is she? Finally, you find her and his clash is not even ready for you. She's doing something else. The prophet would have been angry to say, I spent time to come here. You don't even know what you are missing. I'm on my way going. But because he was sent, he had to stay. His assignment was to change her life. When you find the anointing and the prophets that God has sent over your life and your situation, let me tell you, you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the, as if Satan does not exist. It's, it's not just, this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say, the most important thing is God. Yes, you are right, but you are wrong. The most anointing is anointing. What is there? What is so special about this man of God? This is what I'm teaching you now. People are sent to people. Even the word of God is sent. He sent his word like a messenger. Meaning until that word is sent, you can stay there. But when the word comes, like a messenger, angel Gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person, Daniel. All that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies. He would have been angry to say, I'm going to someone else. Mm -mm. He said, Daniel, I am come to give you understanding. Are you the only one? I am come to give you understanding. Jesus is appearing by the road. Saul is on his way to Damascus. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says there were other people with Saul. God would have been fair enough to at least give them something. And then he isolates one person and discusses with the person. The rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down. They just got up to clean themselves and say, Kai, now what is all this one now? Whereas one person has that encounter. Sent, sent, sent the word that changes my life. Sent. I have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets, and my God, did my life change. Tonight, let me tell you if you can believe this, he said, believe his prophets. I know you are a businessman, 
I know you are educated. I know you are smart. But there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper. They are solved from the realm of the spirit. It's only the result you receive here. Are we together now? Believe in his prophets. So shall you prosper. Write this down, please. His prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you. You must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that. No. Give them room to study the track records of your results and find out whether the results are worth your believing. How do you believe his prophets? Open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions. Don't just receive the grace alone. Instructions. Many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation, you can sit down and say, please, what is, we are not children here. What is all this nonsense? He told Naaman, go to Jordan, wash seven times. J Naaman said, me, Jordan, there are clean rivers somewhere. And the small girl said, you are the one in trouble. If you don't go and wash, you can go back with your lepers. Two scriptures. And then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 31. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. It says, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and also what? his servant Moses. God performs mighty things and creates that track record, not just so that he alone will be believed. God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord, they believed the Lord, and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord, and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, look up please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. That means, I can talk to you without the cloud. But I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. It says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. 
So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction, do you guess that one? God does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the, the leftover of unbelief. Because you see, some of us are coming from different Christian experiences. Some of us have been... Our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology, all kinds of philosophies. Some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of God, prophets, and whatever. And chances are that when you come like this, usually you will just add the man of God to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them. And God says, not so. And he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in Mount Zion. Are we together? It's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your own belief immediately. Readjust your own belief while the devil is trying to lie to you. Can your life be changed all of a sudden? The, the power will touch the person near you. This somebody you shook hands with, turn to your neighbor and say this and that. So you know that the person, uh, the person can't be acting. It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now i said i am amazed at how people in africa and nigeria trivialize success i am shocked at how people um believe that success is about luck it's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like i think these people are just fortunate is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake. No. Including the testimony you are about to have. That gentleman from Ghana, he did not just press this thing and found my name. No, 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 no. The anointing that is sent with that word works day or night are we together now there are many testimonies just like his that gentleman you see that now someone will tell you i was sitting and i had a dream how about those who buy new phones brand new phones brand new phones and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside how do you explain that a new phone not new, uh, what do they call that thing? Not new memory card. I'm not talking about new memory card. A new phone that you bought it, tear rubber. You are the one who opened it. Then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question. Who, who now, who, how do you explain that? Listen, listen. We live in a world that is not natural. It only manifests the spiritual naturally. The, 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 the earlier you got this, the better. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. All that you see in this world is only a reflection. Say reflection. The real control room in this our world 
is the realm of the spirit. Whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory. Nothing happens that is physical. Are we together? One of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight, among the many miracles we desire is finance. Oh, Nigerians, finance. You want to talk a good news to any honest Nigerian right now. In this day and age, as we transit into the ember month, no matter, speak about their spiritual life, yes. Speak about their love for God, passion, new depths, but please don't ignore that other one. Just even if it's in passing, just say something about it. Finance. Many people want to see financial breakthrough. Many people are working and they are trusting God for breakthrough. And remember, the strange thing about finance, do you know why, listen, I'm not talking about money, we're going to pray shortly. Do you know why many believers are poor? Because in the kingdom, finance is warfare. Money is not just an instrument to live well, it's a weapon. See, listen. Oh dear, what's it? Ecclesiastes 7. Let me just talk a little. You was... Uh, I, I didn't plan to say this, but Ecclesiastes 7, verse 12. Let me show you something. May God give somebody deliverance right now. Read it, read it. One to read. For wisdom is a defense. Uh-huh. And money is a defense. Just stop there. So we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense. Now look up. When the Bible says you have a weapon, what is a weapon? Something you use to both defend yourself. And you can use also for attack. Is that true? If you give me a weapon, like a shield, I use it for defense. And the Bible says, one of the many weapons, money is one of them. And the Bible says, those weapons are not carnal. The word not carnal means they are not man-made. But my brother, my sister, this thing is man-made. It was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because this is man-made. But the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal. He says it is mighty through God. That means there is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means this thing is only the body. The same way human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says believe is prophet there is something they can do that can do something to the many things, including this. This is what we chase all around because we think this is paper. No, this is not, this is paper, yes, but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit. This is what you need to understand. So the spirit can instruct it to leave you. And it can leave. No matter how hard working you are. You can receive salary. And all you have is part of this left. And it can be instructed to leave you. It will, you know it's going. It's going out of your life. It just touches your hand and disappears. Because the weapons. Prosperity is warfare. It's not just about money to buy car and houses. Money is a defense. It can defend the gospel. It can defend a man. And the Bible says all those weapons, they are not carnal. So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please, are you getting what I'm saying? If you can understand this alone, at least even if you don't know how it comes, you already know that it doesn't come by itself. These are the mysteries that surround our kingdom. You ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom?
my brothers and my sisters listen to me this is a spiritual realm you don't have to be a Christian to believe it you just have to be alive this is a spiritual realm animals know it plants know it's a spiritual realm that's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it you don't leave it open you cover it because what happens there is none of your business now you just cover it and watch it happen and it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down a little seed when you planted it it had no roots the bible says just like you do not know the way of the wind nor how a woman how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child you know and all of that so also you don't know the way of god the lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities listen that are beyond the realm of the eyes are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and i watch and many times i'm in shock as i watch the immutability of god's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we are sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who are in need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal that you're sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are no i want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> This one is not brain work now. This one is not one plus one. I told you one plus one plus God is equal to whatever he says the answer should be. One plus one is two. But one plus one plus God is not equal to two. It's not even equal to 10,000. It's equal to any answer that God puts there. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now? I'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all. When you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today, you should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters, I present to you this same God who can change your life who will change your life i'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others wow this is how god has changed this lady's life wow we are soon going to pray you must have a desperation and say lord i didn't come tonight to clap for anybody i left my journey wherever lord i know that you will visit me and i hold on to the horns of the altar while you are sitting the devil is telling you remember tomorrow by 12 your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer i believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute i want you to just mention everything you are trusting god to do tonight go ahead Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. 
any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil it's a luciferian spirit let your spirit and let your attention be open yes lord i believe you mention it don't say it's too big that's the devil too big compared to what pray believers lord i know you are able you are able to take away this reproach from this family talk to jesus even if you find yourself crying just continue to speak lord you are able change this situation turn my academics around lord turn my finances around lord i'm in a situation right now where only you the god of heaven can arise turn my ministry around lord i'm confused i don't even know where to go right now i don't know whether to go to the left or to the right but i receive grace pray are you praying kill unbelief as you are praying don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time god of heaven It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around something has happened the signs and wonders are no more like before the revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before i'm here for a turnaround oh god my prayer life has died i'm here for a reawakening i no longer fast i no longer pray i don't know what has happened to me i cry for help One more prayer point lord i believe you and i believe your servant i believe that anointing and i believe in its ability to turn my life around walk on any unbelief in my heart oh god and take it out tonight go ahead and pray every spirit of doubt every spirit of fear
Isaiah 61. I sense a very strong anointing here already. Isaiah 61. Please participate in everything we are doing. It's going to be a very fast one, but let your spirit be open. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord, the same Lord that you are instructed to believe, hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Now listen, this is why he anointed me, because there is an agenda. But that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart. It takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart. To proclaim liberty. Now I like this one. To proclaim. To declare that the time has come for you to walk free. It says, and the opening of prison. My brothers and my sisters, there can be men physically walking, but they are in prison. Next verse. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified so the end of it is for god to be glorified but not in the current state no so anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed, you are not free. You are not free at all. If you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken, you are still not free. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let me give us one last prayer point. Father, every desire I brought here tonight, I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakatosh. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barateke barakosh. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness.
now, the people I'm going to ask to come out, if the anointing comes upon your life right now, then the Lord, okay, I want to pray a prayer now. Please be your brother's keeper, whether you are inside or outside. It's because of what will happen when I pray. The anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically. That's why I'm saying you should. You should just hold them. Are we together now? The Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside outside online and i declare spirit of the living god there are men and women here who have been delayed and speed must come upon them right now i declare at the count of three one two three receive that grace i command speed speed right now speed let the hand of god come upon you the bible says the hand of the lord was upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it. It's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone. It's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years in one month receive that grace i energize your spirit man speed when speed comes upon a family you will see it in the result when speed comes upon your spiritual life when speed comes upon your academics i'm praying again the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed. I release that grace. Let that anointing come upon you. Speed, speed, in the name of Jesus Christ. Speed. Now, now listen. Fire in the spirit has many significance. Fire, this fire is a mystery. It was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here. Fire does not run away from any element. Fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit. Whether you put metal, the metal will be hot. Wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing Yet it is not destroyed. It is not solid. It is not liquid. Are we together? It looks like gas, but it's there. You are seeing it. You can't hold it. You can't cage fire. You can't lock it up. It's not restrained by anything. The Holy Ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire. Listen. This fire, I want you to bring those people out. This fire you see, will bring an end. Now, believe me when I tell you this. Will bring an end to many captivities. Many captivities. At the count of three, I just want you to shout with me that word fire. That word fire. And many of you will be surprised. In the name of Jesus. Where Sam, there's a song in my spirit. When we sing that song, what's the name of that song? Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Am I correct? So you know what I'm talking about. 
So you sing that song by the time we pray. In the name of Jesus, I'm stretching my hands right now. Spirit of the Lord, you seek to reveal yourself as fire, that consuming fire. No power and no spirit. Even spirits can be burnt by fire. In the name of Jesus, I declare that any operation that is not of God, at the count of three, by the mystery of the Holy Ghost, as fire, let there be deliverance, let there be refining, let there be the breaking of chains. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Bring them out. Fire. The mystery of fire. Shabos Katabarata. I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, blow, blow, blow like the mighty. Spirit of victory, Spirit of victory. cover us with your wings. Cover us with your wings. Hallelujah, Madam. Please clear the way for me. This woman, tap this woman for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week, and you too? Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around into surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ, where is that man that came from my Duguri? 
the one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I've seen fire. It's leaving my hands and it's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? Our CV and sister. Your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hand. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me audio. Sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now. And I'm seeing letters. And I'm seeing on the letter, congratulations. Listen. And I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you. Except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace. I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace. You must testify. I declare whatever it will translate to, whether a job, whether increase, whether promotion, I command it, I declare it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus, I command it, I decree it, I declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hold the hands of this lady. This one. Hold the hands of this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise. I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds onto that family, I command that it's gone now. In the name of Jesus, it is gone. I curse the power of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this. But in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the spirit of God. And I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. 
whatever it is you are involved in god is about to bring grace upon it i stretch my hands right now at the count of three may the fire of god come through your hands into your life lord i pray in the name of jesus whatever has not been working in your life i force it to work right now receive that anointing i force it to work now inside outside i force it to work now those following online i pray and i speak whatever it is that you are doing i declare the blessing i activate the blessing upon the work of your hand i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ the lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is i'm seeing fire still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are in the name of jesus christ hallelujah this the prayer is for everybody eh? but this particular prayer now is for ladies the Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed outwardly you are beautiful you are good looking you are virtuous you are wonderful but in the realm of the spirit is not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in this in the realm of the spirit a man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful the gate was beautiful but the man's life was nonsense there are many people you can stand i'm, I'm saying everybody but this is specifically for our sisters and it's not just the issue of marriage i'm not talking about marriage alone that there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that veil must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed, but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus I change it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Listen. A man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. Uh, you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life, of your, is your dad? Where did he come from? From High Nairo. From High Nairo. From High Nairo. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare in the name of Jesus anyone who has exchanged your destiny sir I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter. Hold my hands. I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady. Huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? Am I even with that one? Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. Yes, Good sir. things, and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil, you are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. Yes, you have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter... The Bible says, don't let your good evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you. You bought something for them and they end up you are saying what is this? I pray for you and the person says so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear I want to pray for you. Eh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is you know things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Eh? Favor will come close to you but then never enter your life. Yes. What yes, do you sir. do? I'm working in a security. Oh, you are a security? Yes, sir. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. I'm running my master's. You are running your master's? Yes, sir. My dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe that. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying do this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen, I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, Daddy, sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you, as a father, will say, This one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer. Because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny, 
I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, if the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sent your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job. That on Sunday you're on your way going to church. Your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man? If you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again. In the name of Jesus. May my God relocate someone here. By the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor James, good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad. And the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the spirit. There are some of you. It's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies. And see Nigerians, they want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that cement right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in U.S. or U.K. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the Spirit.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send, you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. Are we together now? Overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside. We'll walk to your projector stand. Overflow two. You'll also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three. Walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it. And ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourselves very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in our PR department, you can join them. And then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still yet to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing. Pastor Jax Ejimi there, um, Pastor Alpha, Benga, Overflow, One, Pastor Femi, Promise, Overflow, Two. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people. God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment is for praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you, just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you.
right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of right now.
Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. what my song will be hallelujah hallelujah that's what my song that's what my song will be 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 hallelujah hallelujah that's what my song that's what my song will be that's what my song what my song will be and that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be Kado Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, if you are here to submit your request, just do it. As soon as we are done, there are people waving their requests here. So while the worship team is playing, now, please make sure that sure that you are in the spirit of worship and not as if you are submitting to us. Make sure your heart is connected. So offer an omega. We worship your name. Yeah. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Those following from any nation of the world, I'd like you to just pray. We're just going to pray and speak over this. Go ahead. Stretch your hands. We're praying on this request. Shalabakaruta sabre digetegata baladaba. Nataka parakato shadabre digete beledebos. Father, let your people return with testimonies. Hashala gata brada gata barakato sada brada gadesh. In the cross asia sahasa barakato shabrada gata baladaba. Rakata branda gata baladabosh. Ebratos gata brandi gedi baladabosh. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. 
Lekato shata prate kato sa prate kate ba. Rakata parata parato sa de prate kate ba la ba. Arato se kele monta shin da ba. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you. These prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that are bound. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable. Lord, you will bend things tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will change things tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit. Amen. You bring healings. You bring deliverance. You will bring breakthrough, financial breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. You bring changes, Lord, deaths, supernatural deaths will be canceled by the power of your spirit. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, we turn it into testimonies. Yeah. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any requests to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. I decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season. 
if you're a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. Are we together now? And in the name of Jesus, I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah. I decree and declare, may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every family represented here. In the name of Jesus, and I say this from the depth of my heart, enough is enough. I prophesy it again, enough is enough. Whatever represents setbacks in any family, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and I command that an end comes to it this night. Every graduate here that is trusting God for a job, you heard the testimony here, in the name of Jesus Christ, both where you applied and where you didn't apply, may the angel of the Lord see to which that a miracle job locates you. Those who are in business here, in the name of Jesus, business is spiritual, the grace that will cause your business to command strange results. May that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God, that means if God does not step in for you, you know you are in trouble. I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life, come out of that trouble now. Whether it's a financial trouble, whether it's whatever, come out of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every attack on your destiny, I decree and declare from tonight, by the assignment of angels, we ward off that attack in Jesus' name. Whoever has been destined by God to help you rise, and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit, he has not been able to locate you. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you. <laughs> Believe in every prayer that we're praying. We're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity, minus you. <laughs> I say it again, minus you. Everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family, I declare the mystery of exemption over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That when men say there is a casting down, I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year. I decree and I declare over your life. We're rounding up. There are some of you, nothing ever works in your life. It's not like you are lazy. It just doesn't work, except it fails. You, to the point that even when you see success, you are afraid of it because you know it will not last. I declare, not only will you be successful, I command your results to last. I say it again by the Spirit. I command your results to last. I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Any door that was once open and is now closed, I reopen it in Jesus' name. I hope you believe everything I'm saying. Please believe it with all your heart. 
I pray for every student here. I don't know what challenge you may be having. Or I don't know what you are trusting God for. In the name of Jesus, I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them. I don't care what needs to be done. Let it be done to move you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it again. Let it be done to move you. There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME. In the name of Jesus, there are some of you who the results you have seen now, from that result you will not get anything serious. I change that result now. I change that result now. I change that result now. Believe it, you are too young to walk in unbelief. I change that result now. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline 